Will APC survive the discontent over the 10th National Assembly leadership? Well, tonight we will be discussing plans by aggrieved lawmakers to battle Tajuddin Abbas, the candidate endorsed by the president-elect Bola Tinubu. And the tribunal to consider PDP and Labour Party requests as 8,000 Nigerians sign a petition demanding live broadcast of presidential election tribunal. This is Post Politics and I am Mary Ann O'Connor. A wave of discontent, acrimony, protest and anxiety has enveloped the ruling All Progressive Congress APC, sequel to its zoning of the 10th National Assembly positions ahead of the inauguration build for June this year. The party's zoning formula has sparked outrage and discordant tunes among its members and left the polity twitching. It has equally led to intensified scramble by top contenders who believe that there should be a review of the zoning arrangement. The national chairman of the party, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, has admitted that there was no adequate consultation before this decision on the zoning was reached and he also assured that the party would go by or go back to the drawing board and review its decision where necessary. Now some party leaders and aspirants have argued that the most worrisome part of it is that the National Working Committee did not just zone offices to various geopolitical regions but specifically zeroed on preferred aspirants in those zones. Well joining us to discuss this and more is Honorable Bimbo Daramola, he's a legal and also um, joining us is a legal practitioner uh, and uh, journalist Olaleko Ige. It's so good to have you join us, Olaleko. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Miran, for having me. How is Lagos today? Great, great. Um, let, let's go back to last week when the APC issued a statement on their preferred candidate or who they had, in quotes, anointed um, in the midst of all of the um, struggle or scramble for who would... Um, at, at the end of the day, become Senate President, Deputy Senate President, Speaker, and Deputy Speaker uh, in the higher and lower chamber. Uh, many people have obviously um, queried the decision and the premise for which they took this decision, especially where they had to mention the name of the president-elect. Um, is this the first time this is happening ever in the life of Nigeria's democracy? Well, it's not the first time, and there is... Uh Nothing wrong with it. Uh, a party is the platform upon which all the political, or should I say, all the senators elect, you know, have won election to go to the upper chamber of the National Assembly. So there is absolutely nothing wrong. If the party comes out and says, look, uh, this is the direction we are looking at, and this is the candidate, you know, we are going to narrow down to, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That is party politics. Right? That's why they say, you know, the party is supreme. You... You belong to a party. The party has taken its decision. Naturally, the decision of the party won't go down well with everybody. That's, that's normal. There will always be different tendencies within a, a political party. But the party has taken a position. And I'm sure you know that the party will be working around the clock to ensure that they get all members of that party to support their position. It's not the first time a, a party has taken a position as to who they will prefer to lead the Senate, especially when they have the majority of the senators elect okay. in the National okay. Assembly. It's interesting when people say imposition of candidates, you know, they're saying that this is more like an imposition as opposed to allowing for fair hearing, because most people would look at this as an, op um, an opportunity for members of the National mm -hmm. Assembly to pick their leader, even though the majority, obviously, will still be from the APC. Um, so why is that not being allowed to happen, as opposed to picking or anointing a preferred candidate? Well, to me, this, this is no imposition. The party has expressed a choice. The party says, this is the candidate we prefer. That is the decision uh -huh. of the party. It has not stopped any other member of that party, or even any member of the opposition, from aspiring to become uh, uh, to become the uh, president of the Senate. Remember what happened in 2011 when the APC had wanted somebody else to be the president.
president of Senate. That uh, in 2015, sorry, when they wanted somebody to be the president of the Senate, mm -hmm. the party had preferred uh, Ahmed Lawan. But eventually, Senator Bukola Saraki emerged against the wish, you know, of the party, and he led the Senate for four years. So to me, it's not in position. The party has expressed its position and said, look, this is the candidate we prefer. This is a political party. They have a right to meet and to say, look, this is the person uh, uh, we prefer. If at the end of the day, another person emerges, the party. Of mm. course, we have no choice but that to stand behind uh, whoever that emerges. Uh, the party has named uh, uh, a preferred choice. It has not stopped any member of the APC in particular from aspiring to become the president of the Senate. And I hear uh, Senator Oju Zokali from Abia, he said, look, he will go ahead with his aspiration to become the, uh, the, the, the president of the Senate. So it's a party decision, really. This is not a position. They've not said, look, without uh, either Fabio or nobody else. No, the party has only said, we prefer Fabio. They are not going to stop any member of the party from aspiring to become the president of the Senate. Okay. Um, joining us also is um, Honorable Bimbo Daramola, who's also uh, obviously been a member of the National Assembly, and he's also a legal practitioner. Honorable, let's look at the, the movements within the House. Of course, uh, many people are also asking the APC chairman, um, you know, to stop aggrieved um, party members from forming a coalition with the opposition, being that these people would rather take these positions with or without the blessings of the party. What are your thoughts? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity and the invite. It's nice to see you one more time. Happy New well, Year. Um, sometimes it worries me why we keep coming back to the same position um, every one time that uh, um, a new assembly is supposed to be or is about to be inaugurated. Mm -hmm. um, I think a democracy and the practice and the process should have moved past this point. I was in the House in 2015, and 2011 to 2015, we went through that. And then 2015 to 2019, they went through that. And then we're back onto the same spot at this time. And I don't think it is necessary. We should have moved beyond that. But I feel, let me clear out one or two things. Number one, the party is supreme. That's number one. But that would mean that the party also has exhausted or exhaustively taken that decision. Um, I believe very strongly, I believe very strongly that while the party is right in the exercise of the authority as the basic vehicle that are taking these guys to Abuja, particularly the National Assembly, I also would think that the party would also seem or come across as um, a father, like a father, with sons. And you, everybody knows that in parenting, even when you prefer a child, you don't make it very obvious. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, fine. When you prefer a child, or when there's a preference for a child out of the children, you are most likely going to do that subterraneously. You're not going to do that like devil may care. And I think that is what has made these guys a little bit sticky about the decision of the party. Originally, it started out as zoning. And then, um, all of a sudden, it's gone pop. Uh, Honorable Daramola, are you still there? Uh, I think that um, we lost that connection. Um, let's see if we can... We, uh, yes, let's see if we can pick up with um, Olaleko. Um, let's come back to some of the people who are from the north who have also thrown their heart in into the ring because uh, Honorable Daramola talked about the fact that the party is supreme, but where is the place of internal democracy? Yes, um, the party might prefer a certain candidate or certain candidates, but then there is room for fair hearing. Where is that opportunity for fair hearing? Why was this move taken even before they had that meeting where people had to say, well, we all don't support Akwabiu? Olaleko, can you hear me? Olalekon, can you hear me? Are you there? Uh, I th we, we will take a very quick break and bring all our guests back together. Stay with us.
It's still plus politics and we are still looking at the political dynamics on the floor of the National Assembly building up to the, of course, the emergence of who decides to lead or who will be leading uh, the Senate and the uh, House of Representatives. And I'm still being joined by um, public affairs analyst Olale Kon Ige and, of course, peer expert Honorable Bimbo Daramola. Now, Honorable Daramola, you were cut shut uh, by the network um, connection. You were trying to talk about zoning and how it applies to what's happening in the National Assembly right now. Quickly. Yeah, um, I was just trying to clarify um, one thing, that the party is like a father, all right? That must be careful with how parenting is up is is um is um is child. everybody knows that if you have five children three children two children even if if you like one of them you must also discharge that in such a subterranean way you don't want to make it self-evident you don't want to throw it in the faces of the other children that oh i prefer x to y and because you know we all know the consequences of that in the long run and in the short run so i would expect that the party Yes, having the authority and being able to exercise preference, but she also be mindful of the fact that every one person that is contesting at this time is will come in under the umbrella of the party as the children. Okay. Now, when you begin to say, I prefer Tunde and I, I would rather Tunde, when there are no manifest defects with Joker, then you're beginning to cut trouble. This is my this is my interpretation. I've been there before, and this is where the beginning of rebellion starts. That after all, I mean, you have been issue. You didn't like me, so if you didn't like me, I've been issue. Why must I be loyal to you? But I think the party may walk a different path, learning from what happened in twenty fifteen, no twenty eleven right? when we went there, when we were there, and twenty fifteen shortly after I left, and then. Even, I think, 2019, to a large extent, we just escaped it by whiskers in 2019. So, my take on this would be that even if the party prefers somebody, I'm not too sure that having to name that person, like zoning to personalities, there are three on the, there are, okay, fine, maybe he has about 178 new members, or returning, new and newly elected and returning members. So, isolating one person out of seven people who had shown interest to be speaker and making that manifest in the manner in which it was done probably got under the skin of these guys, and that's why they're beginning to form G this and G that. Ultimately, one person would have to sit in that chair, and it will give the party a lot of comfort if the nominee of the party gets to sit in that chair, but it should not be flaunted in the faces of other contestants. Mm. All right, back to you, Olaleko. Uh, let's quickly analyze the personalities that the party has picked. Let's start with the, the person of former governor of Akwaibom State, um, Gotswil Obot Akwabiu. Now, a lot of people know Akwabiu for different reasons. And recently, he has also been um, um, invited by the EFCC, not once, not twice. He's had several cases uh, hanging over his head. Many would say, well, he's not been dicted on anything uh, whatsoever. But the person of Akwabiu, how well will he fare as a Senate president? Oh, you're asking me? No, I'm asking Olaleko. Olaleko, can you hear me? Yeah, I think um, he's had an executive position before. He was governor of uh, Akwabiu for eight years. Remember, even as a first time, he was the, I think, minority leader, you know, but the Senate, uh, just before he lost his re-election bid, you know, in Akwaibom State, uh, whether it will not be fitting, you know, to serve as the president of the Senate is a different thing. But having been governor of the state for eight years in Akwaibom, having been in the Senate for four years, you would say that, look, he's had some kind of um, cognitive um, experience and is able to bring this to bear, you know, in administering the Senate. The Senate is very important. Uh, is made up of uh, different political parties this time around. I think this is the first time since 1999 we are going to have um, uh, senators, you know, from about four or five different political parties. We are from the YPP, we are from the PDP, we are from the APC, we are from the NNP, and now we have senators, you know, from the Liberal Party. So this will be the, uh, shall I say, the widest in terms of uh, 
political parties that will be available at the Senate this time around. So it requires somebody with a reasonable level of experience to be able to put all of this together and work for the common interest of Nigeria. And that, if it wins, that's what the Apabio should be able to do. And like what, uh, like what Honorable Daramola uh, is talking about, uh, the party to put names into their faces who definitely cause rebellion, like I said earlier, is not left for the party, the leadership of the party, the president-elect of the party, all of the party leaders, even the incumbent president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to be able to put all these different tendencies together, you know, and make sure they have a common front and be able to say, look, well, we've been able to listen to the party, we've been able to listen to the leaders, uh, there'll be bargains here and there, there'll be give and take here and there, and ensure that everybody all kill behind uh, Senator Akpabi, as the party has stated uh, in this manner, or we could have a scenario of 2015 where the party preferred uh, Senator Ahmed Lawan and eventually Saraki worked against the interests of the party and was able to court, you know, the, the, the support of opposition parties in the Senate and eventually it became uh, the Senate president. So whether Akpabi will be able to lead the Senate or not uh, remains to be seen. Uh, Honorable Daramola, looking at the person of Akbabi and also how strong-willed he is and, and you know, just like Olaleko <laughs> said, he's been able to make some things happen. Um, do we see him caving to the whims and the caprices of the party because if, I mean, hopefully if they, if he were to emerge, I'm just saying, if he were to emerge, because many have queried this Senate that it's been a rubber stamp legislature. We remember vividly, um, I don't know if you do, uh, where the s sitting Senate president had said that Whatever bills the president was bringing, she should be rest assured that they would give it or not. And that's what we've seen play out in the few years that, you know, he sat as Senate president. But do we see an Akwabio um, also being a rubber stamp Senate president? Well, again, this, I, I think this is the comfort the party is looking for. You know, when the party insists on wanting uh, XYZ um, in that position, I think they're looking for some kind of comfort. Um, so that whatever, nobody gets in the, in the way of uh, that administration. But I would expect that, um, or let me say I am shocked that up until this time, like we had in 2011, the party had continued to bicker on who not to equip these people or at least give them refresher courses like we had in 2011 ahead of inauguration, where members are told, maybe it was because we were in opposition then, but uh, it wouldn't make a lot of sense, and I think it's expected that the party gets to distill the fine details of our ethos, what we believe. These are position on this. These are position on federalism. These are the position on separation of powers. These are all kinds of things. The party will naturally take a position. And when that position or when those positions have been taken, vis-a-vis -vis economy, vis-a-vis -vis social infrastructure, vis-a-vis -vis all kinds of things, you can now get to, the, get to remind everybody that will be sitting in the parliament, sitting in a table or sitting, sitting in the chair that has been provided by the party. Now, that has not been done. And that further negates the capacity of these people to discharge that duty of representation very well. Mm. And that further corroborates the point that it is not enough to appoint somebody. All of them, if you are ticking the boxes, all of them can be ticked, can, we can tick the boxes of membership of the party and preference of the party to have a member of the party in that chair as the lead. But there are other considerations that the party must mindful of. Mindful of. Today, if I play the fool to get into that chair, what are my innate attributes? For somebody who decides, who practically feels that all I need is to stoop to conquer, and you have said it in your own words that Apabio is, I said it's Apabio, former governor, governor Apabio, is a very strong character. He is, and he's very mercurial as well. Everybody knows that. You know his, his relationship when he was with the president of this country when he was in the PDP, your common transformation man and all of that, and the chummy relationship that existed between him and President Jonathan and all of that. I don't want to go too long or too far into that issue, but we all know it. But so, this party must, more than anything else, build a 
safety guard or safety valve that all the members of the party would be the check for anybody who decides to go off tangent to what the party wants inside the parliament. Mm. Let me also make this clear to you. Let me make this clear to you. No matter what you do, you must also take cognizance of the fact that there are other members who are not of your stock, who are not of your extraction. And in this present house, let me say House of Representatives, not Senate, I can say to you that it will be very or near difficult to make anything happen in that house regardless. Yes, the presiding officers are very powerful, extremely so. But if other guys in the opposition decide to tie themselves together and bond, hmm. they could pose a whole lot of challenge to whoever is presiding. If you flip that over to Senate, I am too sure that Senator Fabio is a very jolly person. He hmm. blends very well. He cavorts with people and all of that. So I will expect that he will eventually secure um, the confidence of others. Because what you need more than anything else is the accept is an acceptable leadership. And that is one thing that being a member of a political, political party does not confirm. Okay. That somebody that has been picked from APC to be that, and uh, does the person also have the capacity to lead people in unison? There are other integral details that must be factored into who leads, who presides in okay. the Senate and in the House of Representatives, particularly over colleagues. You are just a primus inter pares. You okay. have one vote, and most times you don't cast that vote. Okay. You understand? There will be 359 members in the House of Representatives who you will have to rule according to the decisions that are made. Okay. When the man is sitting in the chair says, uh, those in support of this motion say, Hi, he can only do that, he can vote. Okay, all right. F finally, let me come to your Laleko because we're almost out of time. Let's talk about... Um Let's talk about Tajuddin Abbas, of course. He is uh, the chosen or anointed um, man for the um, House of Representatives. And, of course, he just recently paid a visit to the Lagos State Governor, uh, Baba Jidi Sawalu, in, in um, company of his um, choice deputy speaker, Benjamin Kalu. Let's quickly assess, you know, um, the personalities of these two and how they might be able... I mean, judging from Igbada Amila um, handing over to an Abbas, Olale, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you now. Yeah, so I'm... Like, uh, honorable, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you, like Honorable Daramola said. You know, the House of Reps is by far, you know, bigger than the Senate in terms of membership. There are 360 members of the House of Reps, and I'm sure when, if Abbas does become the Speaker of the House of Representatives, he now has 359, as of, uh, Honorable Daramola stated. It, it won't be easy, really. Uh, to lead the House of Reps is a little bit more difficult, you know, than leading the senators. We have just about um, 109 senators compared to 360 members of the House of Reps. Uh, is that a, a record of being uh, uh, re-elected into House of Reps? But being in leadership position is completely a different thing. You could say that Jabi Amila successfully led the House of Reps because he had the experience. He was the leader of the House. He's been in, in fact, he's been in the House of Reps for as long as I can remember. So he's gathered enormous, enormous legislative experience to be able to lead the House of Reps. But whether Abbas can do that is a completely different thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So he needs to gather uh, more than enough support of the members. Then he must also have the managerial acumen, you know, to be able to lead the House of Reps. It will be a difficult one, really, because this House of Reps is also made up of more political parties that we have had since 1999. So it will be more difficult leading this 10th assembly, especially when it comes to the lower chamber. Well, there's a lot that uh, is left to be seen. Uh, fingers are crossed and we're all waiting with bated breath to see what happens just before, um, you know, May 29, if everybody decides that they're going to ban behind this gentleman. But I want to say thank you. Honorable Bimbo Daramola uh, is, of course, a former member of the National Assembly. And, of course, he's a PR experts. Olale Koege is a journalist and a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you so Thank much, you everyone. everyone. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be discussing calls for the live broadcast of the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal and what these people might be deciding come May 19th. Stay with us.